So, architectural concepts. What are they and how do you get one? In today's video, we will be talking about architectural concepts and the four key steps on how to have a successful concept. I will also be going through my design process from my last semester project, which was an aircraft hangar that I got an A for. Feel free to pause at any moment as there are some helpful study notes about architecture and the design process throughout the video. Also, don't forget to subscribe if you found this video helpful as I upload every single Friday a new architectural video or content. And without further ado, let's jump into the video. So first we are going to talk about concepts and what they are and every architectural project should start with a concept which provides the foundation of your design process and decision making. When you define a concept it literally means an abstract idea, a plan or intention, an idea or invention to help sell or publicize a commodity. Therefore a concept can be anything. You can be inspired by birds painting, sculpture, and so on. The purpose of an architectural concept, also known as party, is to get your project and approach consistent, and it helps sell your project. Think of it as your big idea. What is the story and who is the building for? So to the good part, how do you start, which is always the most intimidating part but with these four steps, you will have a strong project. Site, design brief, narrative, and complexity. So let's dive into them in a bit more detail. First, you need to have a completed and assessed your analysis of the site. The site should always be the initial starting point to your process. I will have a playlist link for you in the cards about site analysis and what should you analyze. But briefly, you will need to identify the key constraints features and characteristics of the site and its surrounding context. And to be honest, when I first started, I didn't know how to use site analysis in my project and it was just something that you do, you get marked on and then you put it aside. But here I will show you how I use site analysis in my hangar project. So the first thing is I've done little ones that are bigger in scale and show you the site in more context and then I've done one that is a bit closer to the site. And then afterward, you do an opportunities and constraints diagram which is just a diagram where you show how you will use your site analysis in your design so for example there is a famous hangar building next door so you can choose to either complement or contrast entrances are you keeping the existing entrance or are you changing it there was also a constraint where there was another hangar that was adjacent to the site so you couldn't have windows there. But there's an opportunity to link between the hangars through a bridge or an underground passage. You could write things like location of major spaces, in direction of views, or large windows to maximize the light and solar gain and just things like that. You honestly just need to sit down for a minute and really think about all of the information you just analyzed and how will it affect your design. The next step is the design brief. You'll need to work on the first and second step simultaneously. There will always be a design brief that provides you with the information on client and building requirements. And it could be a meeting or a document. And it helps you determine the scheme, the program, the areas and dimensions, circulation, relationship of spaces, and therefore can of course be a major driver in developing or influencing your concept development. I will definitely do a video on how to analyze a design brief if you guys are interested, but basically you do a research on each major space regarding area and dimension, relationship with other spaces, environment, services, fittings, finishes, and construction. I will also add a few precedent studies And after this step, you kind of translate all that research you just did into a schedule of accommodation and bubble diagram. Doing this is really important because it truly helps you understand how your building is going to work and it, it basically just sets out your plans for you. And 
and by this stage you should have a few different concept sketches and ideas. I literally explore every single approach I am thinking before committing because you do not want to change your concept or your big idea midway because it's really hard to just change your concept and doing all of this work beforehand it helps you eliminate all the ideas that won't possibly work also make a lot of models many great architects start with models and then figure out the plans later what i also really love to do is to sketch out interesting perspectives and then try to figure out its plan and how it will work because no one really experienced the building through plans they experience it through interior perspective and exterior perspectives narrative and this here means what is your concept your story or theory behind the project the people who will use it and how it will sit and grow and become timeless which is what all architect wants and i've honestly watched aerospace engineering videos and vlogs about students from my hangar project which is all really useful information daniel Lipskin, who is one of my favorite architects does this really well as in his Jewish museum he had three narratives which he talks about in his book. The official name of the project is the Jewish Museum but I have called it between the lines. I call it this because it's a project about two lines of thinking, organization and relationship. One is a straight line but broken into many fragments, the other is a tortuous line but continuing indefinitely. I felt that there was an invisible matrix of connection, a connection of relationships between figures of Germans and Jews. I found this connection and I plotted an irrational matrix that would yield reference to the emblematics of a compressed and distorted star, the yellow star that was so frequently worn on this very site. I was also interested in the music of Schoenberg and in particular his period in Berlin. I sought to complete that opera architecturally and that is the second aspect of this project the third aspect was my interest in the names of those persons who were deported from berlin during the fatal years of the holocaust complexity complexity is not the same as complicated it isn't doing complex shapes or windows or lines you need to understand here that complexity means that your buildings have multiple meanings and depth and every good architect in every fascinating building, whether it's less is more or less is bore approach of design, has complexity and depth in their buildings. I will talk about it in more detail in a future video and show you exactly how I develop my plans or my building and try to add complexity. Because it's a wide topic, but definitely have a look at the book Complexity and Contradiction in Architecture by Robert Venturi. And you can find it online so you don't have to buy it because it is one of the essential books for architectural students and can add a lot of depth into your buildings. Last tip is a bonus. Don't forget the famous KISS principle on this channel, which is keep it simple, stupid. Start with a simple idea and then develop it. And that is all for today's video. Let me know in the comments down below what you thought about the steps I mentioned today. Are you a less is more or less is for kind of an architect? I am on Frank Lloyd Wright's design approach where he states, less is only more where more is no good. Don't forget to give this video a like if you enjoyed it and share it to your friends if you thought it was helpful. I'm Rasha Shururu and I will see you next time.